Good afternoon, goeiemiddag. It is the year 2021. It sounds like something from a sci-fi movie. Um, and I wish you all, it's the 14th of January, 2021. And I wish you all the most amazing year. Something that I've said earlier, um, actually the first, the first post we did for 2021 was, we are going to take it day by day. And every morning, we are going to wish each other a happy new day. With everything that's so unpredictable and everything happening around us, um, we need to focus on gratitude. And throughout this year, this is going to be our theme. Thankful for the smallest of things around us. And I think something that we all came to realize, um, especially now in this time, is thankfulness for health. We are thinking of everyone all around the world. And we wish you health and safety and the ability to be thankful for the smallest of things, to have, to notice the small things and the valuable things around you. We are going to also start this year off with something small. Um, and that is to get our, organize our lives, get our station ready, get our children ready for school. If you don't have children in school anymore, maybe you have grandchildren, or you need to organize your own life. I am going to share some tips and techniques, but this is also something you can do on, on various surfaces. So let's start small. Let's start with stenciling techniques. For those of you that haven't seen it yet, we've done late last year, just before we closed, we did a video because I so often got requests from, we want to see the people. We want to see what comfort looks like and what Petunia looks like. So there's a video on our YouTube channel that show the faces behind each bottle. It's each bottle of fun. And I think when you see that video, you will fall in love with, with everything behind the scenes and, and the entire Chopo family. Go watch it. We also have a dedicated team on the Choco Creations page that is so, so willing to assist and to give of their own time. So thank you for them. Thank you, Trish, Sunet, Marina, Danny, Lee. Ask your questions. We are more than, more than willing all the time to assist. Um, we also answer on Messenger if we need to get private message to you or to find out more about your question to make sure that we give the right advice. So please... Um, yeah, enjoy the year with us. Let's stay creative, let's stay motivated, let's stay positive. What I'm going to start off with today is a book. I'm going to do it in steps. It's just a hardcover book. It works better than softcover books. And I have a stencil and I saw a question this morning on the Choco Creations page to ask if I have loose, loose bits and ends on my stencil. How do I make sure when I apply my stencil of Paris that I do it correctly? I'm going to show. There were also many questions um, on when, when we posted the files and the books on how these techniques are done. Many of this we have shown before, but we get new, we get new family members on the group and the pages all the time. So bear with me, find color inspiration, find creative inspiration and enjoy the session with me. So I have, I'm going to show various techniques. The first one is done with a stencil and our stencil of Paris based. So on the stencil, there are loose bits and ends, especially um, over here. So what I do is I identify where there's movement on my stencil. With this one, I need to now move my stencil of Paris when I apply it either with an old credit card or with my paint scraper in a downwards movement to make sure if I'm going to move up, my scraper might catch on that piece and then it will cause um, some smudging of happening. But then you can remove it quickly, take a damp cloth, wipe away, put it back, you can reuse the stencil of Paris when it's wet and just fix. Remember, there's always a way of fixing anything. So don't be anxious and this is also creativity. Um, so I I don't want to secure my stencil with masking tape, seeing that I'm working on a paper surface. So the, the masking tape might damage my surface, so I'm securing my stencil with my hand. What I do 
is I take my paste and I move it in a downwards direction. I can remove any excess to make sure I don't have any wastage. Just make sure I do it evenly everywhere. Put back any excess that you might have. I'm working carefully there where I know there might be movement and I just make sure that I do it nicely and evenly. So this is how to apply the stencil of Paris Place. You can determine the thickness and as mentioned before, but I'm mentioning it again, the temperature, the weather plays a big part in the drying time as well as the thickness of the application. And here I'm going to do the same. You can be creative. You can move them around. You don't need to use the stencil exactly as this. I like stencils with various patterns because you can um, manipulate the, the use of it. Use it for multiple, multiple purposes. Move the one closer to the other. Move the one behind the other. So there are very creative ways of using one stencil but to accomplish different looks. Lee is on the other end in Potchefstroom and um, ready to answer any questions and Kaylee is my video lady as always. Um, so ask if there are any uncertainties. So I just make sure that everything is done evenly. And now I'm going to remove my stencil. So I pick it up from the one end to the other while it's still wet and I have a perfect stencil. What I'm going to do with my stencil is wash it immediately in some water and then reuse it whenever I need to. So I have water this, this side next to the table and can just put it there. So this now I'm going to leave to dry. I have one just in a different stencil pattern that has dried already. So this I allowed, we had some we had rain in Gauteng and I believe it has been extremely hot in the Cape today. While well, we're thinking of you, we, are, we can actually breathe today with lovely cloudy weather. The same with my, with my paint scraper or applicator, whatever you use to apply it with. I'm simply wiping it and then it's clean and ready for whenever I need to use it. Okay. Okay, on this book, my stencil of Paris has cured, it's dry. You will know when it's dry because you won't be able to put your fingernail in there. This could also be the last step on a surface to do the stencil of Paris base at the end to have a, just a stencil effect on a surface, but I want to show this. So now I'm going to use a paintbrush and the paintbrush I'm going to use is a choco paint fiberglass. It's a Hamilton's fiberglass brush it's a creative session it's a lovely brush to work with and um, good quality wash it in water immediately after each use and the color seeing that Kaylee so lovely and I've missed her because I've been at the office and she's been at home I'm going to use Kaylee's candy you need to shake it I don't think I shook it that well but shake it and then use it not a wet brush, no water in my paint, and I simply paint the paint onto my surface. And then I want to show a step. This is the first color, bright colors, the coverage is different to pastel colors, that's something that is quite normal in the paint industry. So I'm applying my first coat, Some tip I want to give, okay, what you can also do is just to put an A3 paper or two A4 papers inside to prevent the paint from reaching your pages or just lift up the cover. And here comes the tip. So if you paint something, doesn't matter what it is, and you paint with a paintbrush, um, especially the legs of the table, and you feel, oh, I see a... Um, some streakiness that I want to remove. Here is how you do it. Because streakiness do occur. 
due to the fact that I'm working with a paintbrush. So what I do is I take a foam roller, it's dry, there's no paint on it, and I just evenly roll over the surface and I can put it flat. I don't add any paint to it. And then what it does, it just gives a very even, smooth finish. And I'm not pressing hard, I'm pressing light while the paint is still wet, just to get a very even finish. And then I know there's even paint all over my stencil work. And I will allow this coat of paint to dry, well, 20 to 40 minutes, depending on the weather, and then apply my second coat. And because it's a very bright color, a third coat might be required because my background is so dark. That's something that's quite normal. Okay, does it make sense? Now, once my paint work is done, very important, between paint coats, you allow for the paint to dry before you start applying your next coat, else the next coat will just remove whatever was done as foundation. Maestro is bringing his lemon. We are all being very healthy. We are, um, he wants to put his lemon actually on the table. Can you show them? He wants us to throw the lemon to him so he has his own fruit bowl. Um, so he, <laughs> he has his own fruit bowl with apples and lemons because he loves the lemons to play with. And I believe he gets some vitamin C in as well because he eats them right at the end after we throw it to him. So he takes his own apples from the fruit bowl. A fruit bowl. Okay, this is going to dry. Now I want to show next is I am done painting on this book. So I've applied my two coats and now I'm going to sand. So it's dry. The paint is dry. The stencil of Paris is dry. My hands are dirty, but the paint doesn't leave a chalky finish. So it grips nicely to the surface. And what I do is I use a hundred grit. Sorry, I've cut off the, 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 the other zero. So it's a hundred grit piece of sandpaper. So I can, I'm just going to fold it a bit smaller. I make sure it's nice and flat on my surface and the sound is maybe going to make a, um, annoy you. But I'm going to sand so that you can see what's happening. Turn it around. and until I'm happy with the amount of white of the stencil of Paris um, that is being revealed. Sand more. And there you have a beautiful beautiful book handmade beautiful I can use a dry paint brush and just dust it and there I have a beautiful book ready to use I am not even going to this is for Kaylee for Kaylee for her for her um, for, for going back to school I'm not even going to cover it with plastic then we save on plastic it's even more in environmentally friendly and the cover I used on here was Danny Stem. Something similar that was painted that I want to show is um, the file, just in a different stencil and with more sanding that can be accomplished. And then if you want to dry brush, that's something we will touch on in the next session, is how to dry brush it's a dry brush, very little paint. There are videos on our YouTube channel and website that shows it, but that is done with a dry brush technique. Now also on some books that Kaylee is going to use for school, we have done some stenciling with just paint and I'll show you both with a foam roller and a stencil brush how to stencil. But Kaylee, if you can show us over here. So here are different books. 
different books, different colors. So we are going to color code each subject to make sure that each subject has its own color. By the time, ladies and gentlemen, when all of these books are completely full, Kaylee is going to be so clever, she's going to be the next MD of the company. Kaylee, you, you are going to study hard this year if I look at all these books that need to be filled with information. Okay, now to stencil. I'm going to use this color and we are going to use, we're going to use Danny Stain on this and we are going to use a stencil. Now here is, let's see what is available on this. And what I'm going to do is I'm just going to stencil a section. Now remember from previously, I don't want to stick masking tape here, although I'm going to try. Let's see. Just to make sure my stencil doesn't move on video. Okay, so when we use masking tape, there have been questions about masking tape as well. Make sure your paint has cured for at least 24 hours before you apply masking tape. This is just a book surface. Let's see what happens. I'm going to give it a go. It might damage it. Let's see, then we all know if it can work or not. I'm not pressing too hard, so I'm just lightly attaching my masking tape. Masking tape for two reasons. It secures your stencil, but it also gives you more place to work. So if I make a mistake, you can also touch up with paint as well. But if I make a mistake, at least the paint comes onto the masking tape and not onto my surface. Now with stenciling, I'm going to first use a stencil brush. It has short, hard bristles. Then a very important next step is to use very little paint. So I've dipped it in um, my paint. Something that I, that I like to use is like hardboard or even um, a plastic sleeve of the stencil of, uh, of, of the stencils. Then the paint takes longer to cure, so you can actually work off that surface again that you don't have any waste. Okay, I have very little paint. I remove any excess from the stencil brush as well, from the, from the side of the brush where the paint loves to gather. Make sure it's rather too dry than too wet. And I move in circular movement. Rather work with a too dry brush than too wet. This will prevent the paint from leaking underneath your stencil. I don't want to waste anything, so we reuse, repurpose whatever we can. So seeing that the books are color coded, I want to make sure Kelly still knows that the blue book is meant for a certain subject. Away, the first complaint was from a neighbor that Maestro is barking not non-stop. So we had to think of such creative ideas. We had someone coming in every day to play with him to stop him from barking. Um, and there he goes again. So our creative ideas didn't make a lasting impression on it. Okay. And now I'm going to remove. Let's see what happens with a masking tape. It's still fine, but I didn't press too hard, just to lightly secure the stencil. And I remove, and it is perfect stencil work. Now I can put the, just the paintbrush, the bristle. Now I can put her, uh, um, the sticker there with her name subject. So that's stenciling with paint. And a stencil brush, and key to this technique is to work with very little paint. Something that I also like to do is when it's completely dry, just take a 200 grit piece of sandpaper and lightly sand as I have done on her books, just to make sure that everything, lovely technique to do on a furniture piece, chest of drawers, I repainted with levels light to at the factory of all these furniture pieces. It's absolutely beautiful. I'll show you later, it's for the book. Um, but what I've also done is 
The stencil work on the drawers with lightly sanded so it looks like it's imprinted on the surface instead of painted on. Are there any questions that you can see, Kaylee? No questions. Okay. Next, we are going to stencil with a roller. Okay, what we are going to use is a um, 110 millimeter roller. And something that I completely forgot to put on this table is a paint tray. So I'm quickly going to get something. Give me a second. We repurpose canvases all the time. This is the quickest and fastest solution. You don't do this. You use a paint tray. Okay? I'm just thinking out of the box. For a second, what you do, imagine, just imagine this is a paint tray and I'm putting my paint in a paint tray. Okay, then I take my 110 mil foam roller and I work it through my paint. We are going, we need to do something with this um, canvas scaly and you remove any excess. So I roll to make sure the paint is evenly spread in my foam roller and that it's not too wet. Rather too dry than too wet. There was a question after I've done that kitchen this, these, these holidays. Okay, I've, I've actually not stopped painting since I've last seen you. Is um, to show how to work with a roller. And this is exactly this. The island of that kitchen. I did use a foam roller, 110 millimeter, to do the stencil work in that Moroccan pattern. Very important tip is to make sure that your roller is not too wet. If you look closely, you, you will see that the paint is evenly distributed throughout the roller. And now to test and just make sure that the paint won't leak underneath, I start, and I'm just going to move this stencil nice and straight. I start and I'm not pressing too hard. So I start with very light pressure. Also to make sure that the paint gets evenly spread everywhere. As mentioned before, a foam roller is a tool, a, a tool where you are allowed to change direction. So I roll. And I'm working patiently. Don't press too hard. You will feel immediately as you roll if too much paint um, gets distributed onto the surface. We have other family members arriving um, from work. Sorry for the noise. So I'm rolling. Buddy, Rosie, Maestro, all of them so glad to see me. As if they know they need to be quiet when I'm busy. Okay, so I'm evenly rolling, making sure that I distribute the paint everywhere evenly. Excitement, girls, excitement. Okay, now I just roll very evenly, very softly just to pick up any excess paint. And let's lift and see what it looks like. And they are perfect flowers. So the, the color I used at the bottom is um, James Jade and then Danny's Day. Oh, you all know Danny's Day by now. Did you see how daring Danny's color is? This is Danny's Day. Go watch the video on YouTube, you love it. And then to fix any mistake. You can either paint over, you can sand. sand. Sanding gives the most beautiful effect. There's a question, Kaylee. No question. Okay. I thought we have a, we have a secret um, sign if there are questions. I thought there's a question. Okay, this is 14 January. It's how to stencil with stencil of Paris and paint on top and then sand. And then also how to stencil with a stencil brush and with a foam roller. I hope 
this has made sense. I hope you are inspired to work with color. Something that I promised myself is that 2021 will be a colorful year. We are going to be colorful and we are going to make sure that every moment is filled with passion, um, possibilities and excitement. So stay safe, stay healthy, remember to be thankful for the smallest things and show and feel appreciation for the smallest things. Spend time with those that matter and then I'll see you next week, same time, not same place, but I'll see you next week. There's a surprise waiting for next week's live session. Be blessed. Till then. Bye.